Um, so name? yeah, I'm Sharon Smith. I am uh, a teacher and education researcher at Two Education, and um, we are a uh, pioneering ed tech provider. Um, we've been delivering online lessons uh, for about eight years now. So I'm hoping that I can share with you some lessons that we've learned um, over that time. Um, our sort of solution, our ed tech solution, if you like, is that our qualified, um, experienced teachers um, deliver live online lessons um, and they are used to fill gaps in the learning of children and young people wherever they might occur. Um, so I've got a, a little bit, I'm hoping this will play in the background for us, we shall see. I have a clip that I can play so you can get an idea of this kind of um, mobile learning cloud platform that we use. Um, I uh, came across a piece of research from the Sutton Trust recently that estimates that back in March of 2020, about 4% of teachers were delivering lessons online. Now, uh, they estimate it's more than half. Um, and there's there's been a debate over the, the um, period of uh, lockdown and lockdown learning over whether live lessons are the gold standard of education. Um, I argue yes they are but only if you're doing it well um, and I guess what we need to address when we're thinking about the future of EdTech is how to deliver online learning well and a lot of the themes that have emerged this morning are ones that I'm going to touch on again. Um, it's good to see we're all on the same page. Um, the first thing I think is that our lessons need to be safe. Um, they need to be of an outstanding quality. Um, they need to be delivered by professionals. Um, we've got to enhance our students' learning and engage them in whatever ways we can. Um, so what is it that makes online learning work? Well, part of it is down to the tech. It's down to the platform. And you can see our platform sort of in the background there, there's a whole host of features that we use, things like the audio with mics or with listen only, the webcams that are movable, um, polling, screen sharing, emojis, um, teachers being able to lock and unlock features, um, save the chat, download a transcript, there's, there's tons. Um, and I, I suppose that the lessons that have been learned, perhaps, um, during this time have been that you know using a uh, less than purpose built platform isn't always the way to go bear with me a second i'll just see if i can move that along there we go um i think what we've also learned in this time is that our classroom teaching doesn't just transfer wholesale carbon copy uh into the online environment um we in eight years have had time to look at uh, the pedagogy and practice behind learning online, um, refining um, things like our la uh, learning cloud technology, but also ensuring that we've got fit for purpose instructional design and applying um, so many areas of theory. And there are some I'll put on the screen there that unfortunately I haven't got time to talk about today, but um, as a self confessed Geek, please do get in touch if you'd like to um, know more about any of those. Um, I think the future of ed tech is going to be uh, based on evidence informed practice. And when we talk about ed evidence informed practice in um, education, inevitably attainment and progress are front and centre. And you can see that we use all sorts of methods to, to measure attainment and um, progress, but they're not the be all and end all. Yes, they're very important, but something that's been a surprise to me personally um, has been the lack of focus on student voice, perhaps during this period. Um, there's uh, relatively little data out there um, from students about their experience. And that's something that we focused on. This, the, this data goes back for the last couple of years, but it's something we've been doing for about seven years at Tube. Um, and those of you in schools will probably liken it to something like the past surveys that are still uh, quite prevalent, but it's critical in gauging impact um, and promoting engagement for our learners to, to find their voice. That's something that we, we're really passionate about. And we've just published or I've just published a piece on finding the voice of students engaging in online alternative provision in um, the British Journal of Education Technology. I'd be happy to share that link with anyone who would find it useful as well. As you can see, these figures and our attainment data are really impressive. Um, but 
what I wanted to kind of distill from this is why I think online learning works or when online learning works perhaps is a better way to look at it. And there are kind of two reasons that I wanted to touch on. And the first one is the student centric approach we have and the communication that um, is required to make that happen. Um, we need collaborative working between uh, teachers, between schools, between ed tech providers like ourselves. And those um, approaches are what uh, uh, ensure progress is being made by our students. That collaborative um, communicative approach is something that's helped support our role as an NTP um, tuition partner. And it's always based upon the assessment of student needs, the commissioning of a programme to meet those needs, high impact delivery, and then evaluation of progress as a result with the student needs, the student progress, the student outcomes being central to everything we do. And the second um, area that has come up again and again in the presentations this morning is relationships. Um, John Hattie's work in 2009 um, ranked relationships, student teacher relationships as having a greater effect on academic growth than anything else. And there's a myth with online learning, remote education, that these um, remote lessons are remote in nature. Well, they don't have to be, and not if you're doing it right, is what I'd argue. Um, and for many of our students, actually, the smaller class sizes, the sort of laser focus on them and their needs, and the continuity of provision has really worked, not just in our current COVID climate, but universally over the, the eight years that we've been working with schools. Um, it's something we've also reconfirmed our commitment to by signing up to our Department for Education Reach and Engagement trials as an NTP tuition partner as well. And they're exploring the ways that student relationships and building positive relationships um, can impact online learning. Um, and that positive relationship also has to extend, doesn't it, to the schools, the parents, the local authority, anyone involved in that student's learning journey. So I guess when it came to kind of the future of EdTech, I wanted to leave you with perhaps um, a vision for what makes a good online lesson. So at you, our objective is to become a, a first choice online teaching partner for schools and non-mainstream settings. But for all of us, what is going to make um, a, a, a good uh, future, a vision of the future, I guess, is the idea that online learning can form part of the broader curriculum. It can plug those gaps in learning, whatever they may be. It will support personalised learning, whether that's enriched or intervention, um, enhance the student experience of technology um, uses in education and then resolves school issues, things like um, subject specialism shortages, building capacity for our existing teachers, enhancing our curriculum choices, enhancing the curriculum offer um, and being a measurable way of utilising things like our pupil premium funding and currently our COVID catch-up funding. Um, and just generally overcoming the barriers to education, um, whether those are location-based or any barriers that, that there are. Um, and that's it really from me. Um, if there's anything I've touched on as quickly as I possibly could in our eight minute presentation that you'd like to discuss further with me, please do get in touch. Or if you think there's something that you can do to help your learners, you can um, visit our website that's up there on the screen as well. Okay.